So now I have an area under a graph. We'd like to approximate this area by using rectangles above and below the graph. So let's take a closer look. So my function is f of x equal to square root of 4 minus x squared. Note, if I let f of x be equal to y, we square both sides, move the x squared to the other side. We have x squared plus y squared equals 4. So this is the circle centered at the origin of radius 2. My problem is asking me to use six rectangles. So what we'll need to do, well, let's see. Let's start with the lower rectangles. So what we'll do is we'll subdivide our region from 0 to 2 into six pieces, equal length. So that means we'll have a base of each of our rectangles equal to the length of the interval. Divide by the number of rectangles is 1 third. And then I'm just going to mark off where each edge of these rectangles shows up. So that'll be 0, 1 third, 2 thirds, 1, 4 thirds, 5 thirds, and 2. So now we have to decide for the lower rectangles, do I use the left or the right end point of the interval? Well, for the lower ones, because of the way our graph is, we see that the top of the rectangle to stay under will always be decided by whatever is on the right side. So my first rectangle uses one third, my second one uses two thirds, the third one uses one, and so on. And then we notice that for the sixth one, there's nothing really to use, so this isn't a rectangle, it's just a flattened segment, or a rectangle of height zero. So, I set up my table to get numbers. So the way this will work is, our first rectangle has, okay, the edge that we're interested in is gonna be on the right, which occurs at one third. I put one third into f of x. Okay, break out the calculator, that gives me 1.97. To get the area of the rectangle, we take the base, which is one-third, times the height, which is the f of x on the right side. And so that's just the same as taking each of these numbers and dividing by three. So I get, for my first rectangle, area 0.657. Then I just continue across doing each rectangle in the same manner. We figure out the right end point, we plug that into the function, and then we divide the answer there by three. When I add all of these numbers up, we get 2.729, and we note that that's pretty close to 3.14, which is the actual area. Okay, we have pi r squared is the area, r is equal to 2, so we get 4 pi divided by 4, because we're only using a quarter of the circle, gives me pi. We go to the upper. We're going to use the same procedure now. We know by looking at the graph, that I'm always using the left end point. So in this case, the left end points are going to be 0, 1 third, 2 thirds, 1, 4 thirds, and 5 thirds. Okay, not a lot of work to do here because if you notice, well, if I start at the first rectangle, the left end point is 0. Calculating what that gives me, gives me a 2. We divide that by 3, I get 0.667. Once I move to the second rank rectangle, I note the one-third, we've already done all the work for. For rectangle three, the two-thirds, we've already done the work for. And we just follow our nose down and note we're not using the two that goes with rectangle six because when we get to rectangle six here, we're stopping at that point. To get to that two would have been if we had another rectangle going out that way. I get all my areas, we add them up, and I get 3.396, and we notice that's a little bit more than 3.14, which is what we would expect.